Board of School Directors, Gateway Board of School Directors, regular board meeting. Do I hear the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're here a roll call, Bonnie. Yes, one moment, please. Mr. Baba. Here. Mrs. Sarucci. Here. Mrs. Delaney. Here. Is Mrs. McBride there? Here. She's on. I'm online. Thank you. Ms. Mongo? Here. Mr. Ritter? Here. Dr. Singh? Here. Mrs. Warning? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. First, we have a guest speaker today. Ms. Davenport from the Boys to Mentoring is the Boys to Mentoring Coordinator with the Summer Fall Youth Empowerment Program. Mm -hmm. If you'd step up to the microphone, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello. I know I don't have much time, but thank you so much for allowing me to present this evening. So as mentioned, my name is Charles Sia. I'm the program coordinator for Boys to Mentoring, which is part of WDGA. And first off, who are we? We are an over 15 year international program geared at empowering youth to get along and get ahead through a two step process. Our overall mission is to promote economic sufficiency through peace and employability for opportunity youth. WDGA currently has three programs, namely Two Steps to Work, Boys to Mentoring, and ePAL. Boys to Mentoring offers one-on-one -on -one male mentoring to encourage our youth to build healthy relationships, along with our two-step process. And ePAL is part of WDGA's plan to facilitate higher levels of global awareness by connecting youth here in the U.S. with youth in Kenya. So 2022 marks the second year of Boys to Mentoring, which is a free youth enrichment program for high school males ages 15 and up within the Pitcairn and Monroeville area. We have workshops on Saturdays in June and July, and it's followed by a paid internship. Our workshops focus on workforce, community, and economic development through job shadowing, mentorship, community volunteering, financial literacy, and mental health awareness, just to name a few. Our goals are to educate our youth to our youth on the importance of linking the classroom to the workroom, exposing them to career paths of opportunity, and equipping our youth with the experience necessary to be more competitive in their career paths, and overall to just employ our youth to be more self-sufficient. So, so far, our program has had 3,180 program graduates, impacted 15,000 youth, and we have placed 400 internships. So we would like to continue this great work, but hopefully with your help. So last year, as mentioned, WDGA branched out from Homestead to the Pitcairn and Monroeville area with Boys to Mentoring, but without your school's participation, we weren't able to meet Really well. <laughs> we weren't able to reach your students. So our hope is to be able to build a relationship with your school and be able to impact your youth, positively impact their schooling, and set them up for success in the future. Overall, together, we hope we can give our youth hope. And I would appreciate if you all would like check out our website. It's two steps to work org for more information about us. I do have flyers. It spelled out T W O R. It's two. The number two. Two steps to work. Yes. Dot org. And then I also have flyers that I can pass out at the end. What does W D G A actually stand for? It's Workforce Development Global Alliance. You mentioned you're um, currently in Pickern right now. Yes. Well, not in a building. We actually so we work with the homestead area so we take the pick caring kids to homestead and the carnegie library and do our workshops there okay. how would we get our students involved just provide them with the information yeah or? so it would be nice to be able to 
I guess, create a relationship, maybe like with your counselors and identifying some youth that would benefit from the program <coughs> or simply just providing the information to your youth at, at large and see if anyone will be interested in it. Um, we are recruiting for it now. So it's for 12 youth. 12. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, age, grade level. High, you said high school. It, high school age 15 and up. 15 and up. Okay. I, you said you're working in Homestead. Are, are you working with a school in Homestead? Or? Yes, we're working with Still Valley. Still Valley. So up until last year, it, it had always been Still Valley High School. Okay. Okay. What so, are some of the internships that there, um, you guys are able to offer? Just curious. Sure. So last year in Pitcairn, we were able to get like Fox's Pizza, Grant's Barbershop, Joe's Butcher Shop. Um, we were able to get Dreamers and Achievers Daycare Center. Um, and as far as Homestead area, we had um, a few different restaurants in that area. Oh, we also got Dragon's Den. Um, and this year we have on board Sky Zone for the Monroeville area. Okay. What about transportation? Is there assistance for students who want to be involved, might have transportation issues? So for the students that we've had in Pitcairn, we did have transportation to get to the workshops. They just had to get to the Pitcairn area. So if they're outside of Pitcairn or Monroe, it might be more of a difficult thing, but we're definitely more than willing to make arrangements. Okay. About how many students are involved in the program? Overall, our total, that our goal total is 24. So 12 for boys to mentoring, and then two steps to work is 12 as well. Okay. So you said you have some flyers? Yes, I do. Ma'am, you want to have a seat? You don't have to stand in the door. I want a board of directors. Come on in. So you're really um, looking for um, just the school to promote your your services to get it into the hands of the students that would be interested. Or if you can like work alongside one another, if there was an okay. opportunity for us to. Mm -hmm. and, um, so okay. There's a counselor at the high school who just walked in. Yeah, is that lady with the blonde hair one? Sorry, Colleen. There you. Go. <laughs> Yeah, in the back. Does anyone have any more questions for Miss Davenport? All right. Thank you, ma'am, and. Uh, Thank you. We'll be following up for sure. Thank you. We're going to move on to comments from residents on agenda items. I don't think anyone signed up because all this came rushing in. So, do we have anyone who would like to uh, comment on agenda items? No? All right. We're going to move on then. To, uh, section A is minutes of previously held meetings, and Dr. Short can take over. Do that thing you do. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Bova. Uh, Section A, minutes of previous meetings. Um, Mr. Schott, are you with us? Yes, I am, sir. Back there. Uh, Section A, minutes of previously held meetings resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approves the minutes of the following previously held meetings as depicted below. So moved. Second. Second. Well, Bonnie, can you hear who's uh, doing the motions and seconds? You want me to keep saying you know, would you repeat that, both of those, please? That was uh, Mr. Williams made the motion. Mr. Ritter made the second. Very good. Thank you. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Section B, financial reports. Once again, Mr. Shot. Short. Uh, section B, financial reports, resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approve sections B1, list of bills, B2, financial reports, and B3, budget transfers, as listed in section B at the Tuesday, April 19th, 2022 regular board meeting. Please note below that of the sections depicted, uh, there was an additional section B1 list of bills for the month of April 2022 added after study session meeting. 
And there was also Section B2, financial statements for the month of March 2022, added after study session meeting. Motion by Mr. Williams. Second. By Ms. Mungo. Thank you. Any, any questions on the motion? Once again, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving forward to um, Section C, there are no items previously tabled. Move on to Section D, Personnel Agenda. Section D, Mrs. Crump. Thank you, Dr. Short. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda. Items one through five as listed in Section D for the regular board meeting Tuesday, April 19th. We only have two additions since the study session. There are two names listed under transfers, and we've added two additional independent volunteers. Motion by Mr. Williams. John seconds. Thank you. Do we have any questions on the personnel agenda? Where's the HR director? I'm sorry, ma'am. Where's the HR director? We had um, initially interviewed for human resource director. Um, the individual did notify my office today um, that she would be pulling out at this point. So we will be reopening that is our correct. pursuit of an HR director post haste, widening the net and um, mm -hmm. reaching out to professional organizations as well. And if somebody would like to submit a resume, how would they do that? Mrs. Trump? It can forward the resume to myself or to Patty Callenball or send it directly to the district. P. Crump at gatewayk12.org. That is correct. I'll save my other comments for the end. Thank you. We have a roll call on this, Bonnie. Yes, Mrs. Sarucci. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mrs. McBride. Aye. Ms. Mongo. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Dr. Singh. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. And Mr. Boba. Aye. Thank you very much. Moving forward, Section F, Administrative Report. Uh, we'll start with Elementary Education. Dr. Rossi. Thank you, Dr. Short. Um, item number one is approved the purchase and administration of the Olveas Bowling Questionnaire to be administered to students in grades three through 12 as depicted in Exhibit A. Item number two, policy 218.1, suspension and expulsion. Division under expulsion within the policies. Mr. Shot. Item number three, acceptance of district donations received during the 21-22 fiscal year, <clears throat> specifically comprised of the five donors as depicted below. Item number four, approved extension of the current preventive maintenance service contract for the two high school weight rooms with G&G Fitness Equipment, Inc. in the amount of $2,228.57 uh, as depicted in Exhibit C. Item number five, Approval of renewal and administrative fee payment for the current Better Unemployment Compensation Comprehensive Program through the Pennsylvania School Boards Association for the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year in the amount of $19,864.24, and that is depicted in Exhibit D. Item number six, approve the renewals and applicable premium payments for the following district insurance coverage policies for the 22-23 fiscal year as depicted below. Item number seven, Approval of the Tricog Land Bank's notice of proposed property disposition for two Monroeville properties located within the Gateway School District and is depicted in Exhibit E. Item number eight, approval of Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV federal funds final allocation amounts for the current 21-22 year as depicted below. Item number nine, Approve the award of bids for the various types of school supplies bid by the district for the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year as depicted below and also as depicted in Exhibit F. Item number 10, 
approval to advertise for bids for the cafeteria fund, the annual bread and bakery vendor products for the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year. I'm number 11, <coughs> approval to advertise for bids for the cafeteria fund, two new combi ovens for the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year. I'm number 12, approval receipt, purchases and payments for American Rescue Plan ESSER 3, elementary and secondary schools emergency relief federal funds items through the general fund during the current 21-22 and upcoming 22-23 fiscal year. Um, the total amount of that is $5,971,929 and that is depicted below. I'm number 13. Approval to advertise for bids and or requests for proposals for applicable purchases with American Rescue Plan ESSER 3 federal funds for the 21-22 and the 22-23 fiscal years. I'm number 14. Approval to hire train to perform required HVAC engineering and design professional services for the new HVAC systems at Evergreen and University Park Elementary Schools through the American Rescue Plan ESSER 3 federal funds for the 21-22 and the 22-23 fiscal years, and that is depicted in Exhibit G. Item number 15, approval receipts, purchases, and payments for American Rescue Plan ESSER 7% state set-aside allocations through the elementary and secondary schools emergency relief federal funds items through the general fund during the current 21-22 and the upcoming 22-23 fiscal year in the total amount of $464,154 and as depicted below. I'm number 16, approval to purchase new district website and provider software license for the upcoming three fiscal years in the total amount of $20,823 and as depicted specifically in exhibit H. And finally, item number 17, approval to purchase new interior and exterior cameras for Rams Elementary School for the current 21-22 fiscal year in the total amount of $16,280 and that is depicted in exhibit I. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Williams. Second. Second by Mr. Mungo. Mungo. Bonnie. Thank you, I heard that. Excellent. Do we have any questions on any or all of those sections? Uh, this is John. Michael, I'd just like to say, I think you did a really nice job scanning for a web development team. I looked at their proposal, their uh, response to the RFP from a software engineering perspective. They have all their ducks in a row. Th that's exactly how I would design the creation of a well-engineered, well-thought-through battle plan for updating a website, a school district's website. So kudos to you, Michael, for, for finding that and presenting that to us. Michael, you should say thank you now, Mr. Rick. He's probably in the meeting. All right. I don't, I don't think he's on. No excuse. <laughs> Any other questions? Either right? that or I was on mute. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as number 17, the cameras that are being purchased for Ramsey, um, moving forward, if we feel a need for other schools to have an upgrade in the system, that will be considered correct? A absolutely. Um, we, you can expect that almost. Yes, uh, we, we will be having the uh, Pennsylvania State Police Task Force come in. Um, not only will they be looking at Ramsey, but all the other um, district-wide buildings as well okay. to see corners, areas that need coverage. And how soon will these cameras or this program be installed? In? Uh, the installation, I, I'm not sure I can give you an exact timeline, however, the um, um, examination of the building should be complete by the end of uh, the summer. Okay. Does that include the maintenance department? Building? Could, absolutely. All areas, uh, including roadways as well. Uh, we have the traffic light cameras uh, that pick up on the um, license, plate. license plates. So. And we will stay with the same system that we're currently installing at Ramsey, so everything is uniform. Uh, of cameras uh, for definition purposes. Okay. Question on uh, 15, we're talking about the Esther's money with learning loss programs. When this money, I know we're good this school year, but when we're looking at the services we are for our students, do we plan on keeping these services for our students? Um, the, the terms are supplement, not supplant. Uh, so it's something that we would be looking at. Uh, again, uh, these funds were designed to cover the learning loss, um, not to be a full-fledged um, 
replacement forever. So it, it's something that the board would have to make that decision whether or not they want to keep those services or um, you know, employees for those positions. Okay. So we have a mechanism in place to assess how well the programs are working. Absolutely. And at the end, you'll report to us how well Correct. each of them has worked, and mm -hmm. then we can decide on cost and whether, as you say, we want to have a plan instead of something. Any other questions? Roll call, Bonnie. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mrs. McBride. Aye. Ms. Mungo. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Dr. Singh? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye on everything but number seven. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Boba? Aye. And Mrs. Ritchie? Aye. And the ayes have it. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Okay, number 12, section G, no resolutions presented by board members for this month. Um, turn it back to uh, Mr. Bova for item number 13. All right, we're going to move on to comments from residents on non-agenda items, and I don't think anyone filed a request in advance, so anyone who has a comment on non-agenda items, please step to the podium. And... Yes, ma'am. Jeanette Beagle, Monroeville resident. Um, I have been trying probably since mid-December with pictures that our students had taken with the Berkshire or whatever the company is now that we use this year new for student pictures. Um, myself, along with many other parents, either got half of their orders some of them got none of the pictures they've ordered. Some of them, like myself, I, I'm missing my kids' class pictures. We do it just because I like to know who my kids go to school with, like to see who they are and all that good happy stuff. I literally have been going back and forth with this company since mid-January. They tell us they've been sent to the schools, they haven't been printed yet, that it'll be another two or three weeks, and here I am almost four months out from the initial contact with them, and I'm getting nowhere. I've spoken with, emailed with principals at Moss Side Middle and there, you know, when I was told the pictures were sent to the school, I reached out to them, hey, have they gotten there? No, they're not there. So there are still parents still commenting on social media that I haven't even gotten my orders, partial orders. So I'm just wondering if there is somebody else at the district we as parents can go to that has a better contact with this company that isn't going to keep giving us oh it'll be another three weeks another three weeks another three weeks because it's you know these are products we've paid for like i didn't even get my pictures in time to give the grandparents with their christmas presents like we do every year and it's you know it's money paid so i'm just curious who who we turn to next because you're looking right at them i mean i i will this is the first i've heard of it okay and, um, i will reach out to the company myself I'll also have Mr. Shaw join me. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, if you have um, any, oh, I, I, I have lots of emails. I have emails and like it's, it's multiple. It's multiple buildings. Like I, my, I have a daughter at UP who has not gotten her class photos. My son's at Moss Side, and originally it was, well, we're waiting for the makeup picture day to be done, and I can, I can grasp it. I mean, I'll give you grace on that one, and. Into February, I'm like, hey, when's the expected thing with this? And they're like, oh, another three, four weeks. We're short with staff. Okay, I can understand that everybody else is. And still, like even yesterday, I sent an email and got a response today that was, we're working on it. It'll be another three, four weeks. So that, 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 you've been telling me three, four weeks for months, and you know, it's unacceptable. Uh, forward me the, the back backup information, yeah. and I will. Uh, you guys engaging in another con. I mean, the pictures were nice. You could do all kinds of fun stuff with them, but I, I'd like to actually have what I ordered. So customer service. Thank you. Yep, that was all I had. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? No. No, sir. Okay, let's move on to um, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Bova. Uh, real, real quick, uh, on the 26th, we will be having a combined 
uh, committee meeting, uh, athletic committee meeting right here in the boardroom at 5 p.m. At 6 p.m., we'll move into the building and grounds uh, meeting that will highlight uh, the construction renovation at Gateway Middle School. Uh, we will have the construction manager's architect, um, myself and Mr. Brown. Uh, we will have aerial photographs and just an update on the timeline of the project. So look forward to seeing everyone. And we will also be posting that information on the uh, website afterwards. And what day did you say? Uh, the 26th. Of May. April. 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 Oh, April. Please don't rush. Yes. Uh, also, um, uh, over the weekend, we had a tragic event happen in Pittsburgh Northside, uh, the Airbnb um, incident, uh, which tragically took the lives of uh, two individuals, uh, two young men, one of which who lives in uh, Pickern. Uh, also was a former student here at, at Gateway. Um, information was received uh, through my office, um, through local authorities that uh, we've had other uh, students attend uh, that party. Um, very thankful that uh, they were not injured, hurt uh, during the, uh, the shooting. Um, did contact and reach out to the high school principal and also our, our counselors. I know Ms. Tortorella, we, we've talked a couple times uh, over the last several days and uh, you know they did a fantastic job providing assistance to our students who were in need, who had questions, concerns. Uh, questions uh, about the entire incident uh, and it's something that is so tragic uh, also i indicated in my letter that went out to the high school uh, staff and parents uh, that we went into a what we call modified lockdown where we only allowed individuals who had prior appointments coming into the building also i had the presence of the monroeville police uh, there in the morning uh, simply to uh, out of an abundance of caution uh, for our students and staff, and also in the afternoon. Um, more details, I'm sure, will be forthcoming uh, as the police uh, uh, follow their leads and hopefully individuals can be brought to justice uh, for uh, heinous crime that took place. So were, the, were those police posted, and how long were they here? Uh, we, we had one officer uh, in a car from Monroe in the student parking lot. The other officer up top at the entrance to the high school, and they were there in the morning from roughly 7 a.m. to 7:30 a.m., and then likewise in the afternoon during dismissal from uh, maybe 2:15 to 2:45. So by all indications, uh, uh, pretty calm day at the high school. Uh, did touch base with Mrs. Torello uh, midday. Uh, everything seemed to be going well. So. Uh, Hearts and prayers go out to the families. And um, it's just an unfortunate situation, but um, you know, t together we need to pull ourselves uh, uh, forward and uh, uh, help the individuals involved. So uh, that's all I have. Dr. Short, do you see continuing the modified lockdown or not? Not at this time, no. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Short. I'm going to move on to board committee reports. I'm just going to go around the horn here. So it's... I wanted to know if you wanted to ask Mr. Hall, because I know he's waiting to get in. Oh, sure, sure. Mr. Hall, you up there? I am. Good evening, everybody. Um, we are in the midst of a, of a volleyball match, big one tonight, um, versus Plum. Um, we're, you know, in the section there, two and one. Been quite a while since we won the section, and this would get us a little farther in the direction of getting the section title, which we're hoping for. A um, couple other things going on. One that I'm particularly excited about. Um, there's a, a group um, headed by the Special Olympics group called Unified Champion Schools, and Unified Champion Schools participate uh, with normal PIAA. Uh, situations with both learning support students and general education students uh, in two sports. Um, and we're looking at joining one as some other schools in the area have already done, and that is uh, bocce. Um, they play an indoor game. All skill levels and all uh, ability levels are able to participate. Um, the goal is to have at least one home 
match um, and pack the gym like a playoff basketball game for those learning support students participating, uh, wearing gateway uniforms. Uh, Special Olympics is involved in outfitting them and providing the court for the indoor purposes, coaching stipends, and uh, we're in the midst of applying for a grant, which will help us to fund it in totality. And there'll be more to follow on that, but super excited about uh, getting involved in it. I've seen it at other places and it's a, it's a, a very special experience for those young people. Um, when, is that, when, is that, when is that expected it's to happen? A winter, it's a winter sport. Um, so we would finish the grant application, hopefully see where we stand with that in the near future. And sometime during the summer prior to the fall season, we would look to go ahead and incorporate that uh, as a, fall, a winter sport. That would begin you know, with basketball and swimming and such. Wonderful. Uh, right now, we're also, um, you know, it's baseball, softball season, although you can't tell that by looking outside. We got another swirl of snow if you haven't, if you're not near a window. Um, and uh, we are also then, um, in, again, volleyball season and lacrosse season. Uh, so all those sports in the are taking place. Um, it's been a challenge to get things, you know, online with, with the ones on the diamonds, but we chopped them around to different fields to keep them playing. Uh, but again, our volleyball is playing well. Um, our lacrosse team is young, but uh, but hungry and playing hard. And um, and we're doing the digital ticketing thing that I'm sure some of you are familiar with, piloting it here in the spring to try to work out any bugs as we move forward. Um, that's really all I had, unless anybody had any particular questions regarding athletics for me. When do you foresee our baseball field up and usable? Well, we, we made a full court press effort to clean everything, like, you know, pressure wash bleachers underneath the bleachers, remove all, all uh, remnants of what had gone on, remove the bleachers that were you know, damaged in a windstorm and not able to be used anymore. I, cosmetically, we were shooting for actually a game today against the Trobe that got canceled um, to go ahead and play the game. The problem now is just the diamond itself. The field is, is very wet, you know, pretty good or so after the last few days. And nobody on dirt is playing right now. But as soon as we get a little bit of a good weather, we're hoping to be there. And the lights have been promised to us in full working order by the 22nd. So we're, um, we're excited about you know, getting some night baseball and softball on campus um, within a week or so. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hall? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do we have anyone else up there who'd like to report? Wherever you may be. No? All right. Now we're going to go with Ms. Warning. Uh, just as Mr. Hall said, uh, volleyball game's going on. Stop up after the meeting. And that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Delaney. A uh, couple of things. Let me thank Ms. Davenport for her presentation. Uh, I know Pastor Nisi very well, and I appreciate uh, the community and the churches working with our school district for the importance of academic excellence. Uh, also, this is something that's going to be coming in actually May 2nd, so we wouldn't have had our meeting yet, but I see so many teachers here, and Teacher Appreciation Week will be coming up May 2nd, so I want to already, or even beforehand, thank all of the teachers for their services that they provided for our students. Colleen, Green Punch. We don't get that anymore. You don't get that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Rick came down here. It, it happened before, Bill. It happened before. Green Punch. And cookies. Yeah. It used to be the highlight of my day when I was there. <laughs> uh, just to bring in a little history, and especially its educational involved, 63 years ago, April 18th, 1959, students petitioned and marched for integrated schools. As we see so many different things happening in our country back then on April 18th, 
this day, 1959, 26,000 high school and college students came to Washington, D.C. to demand the implementation of the 1954 Brown versus Board of, uh, Board of Education Supreme Court decision. Let me just to enlighten you on that. Thank you, ma'am. We we'll move on to Ms. Cerucci. Well, I'm not going to say what I was going to talk about tonight. Um, I want to apologize or explain. Some of you may have seen me on my phone. I know that's very annoying to see a school board member on their cell phone, but I was communicating with our HR director um, about our HR director position, and I'm going to respect her opinion and not discuss the position right now because it's still open. Um, but that's why I was using my cell phone, and I have nothing to add this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cerucci. Go ahead over to Ms. Mungo. Nothing. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Williams. Yes, I have a couple shout out for some of our kids over at Forbes. Uh, they were state champs. Uh, congrats to our 3D animation team for placing first in the state at the FBLA National Center in Hershey. The team consisted of Connor Will, Multimedia Design from Highland School District, Tia Moran, Multimedia Design from Gateway School District, and Austin Gutshaw, Computer Networking from the Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf. So hats off to them for the state championship. And uh, Mandy Moore, who's in cosmetology, also uh, was out in states, and I think she came <coughs> third uh, officially licensed cosmetologist and she also if you'd like to visit her is at alluring designs a salon so hats off to those students for such a great job in representing gateway and for if you remember, Mr. Williams, at the um, last meeting we had, she offered to do something with my hair, which I thought was <laughs> virtually <laughs> impossible. But she came first yes. here and third out there. So, excellent. And also, for the uh, Buildings and Grounds meeting, Mr. Shaw, if you could bring us some numbers for the uh, cost for additional turf at the junior high and the high school, that would be mostly appreciated. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Before we get to Dr. Singh, let's go to Leslie up on the, the, the machine there before I forget her. I don't have anything. Thank you, Mr. Bobo. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Singh. So um, April is National Poetry Month. And um, so we have a Allegheny County uh, Poet Laureate, Celeste Kenny. And she came out, with, she's coming out with a new volume of poetry uh, on eco justice. And she has accepted one of my poems. I'm sorry, what was the she last She has part? accepted one of my poems. Oh, congratulations, in that volume. Dr. Singh. Excellent. Uh, are you, you going to gonna read it tonight? Why not? If you let me, it takes right. it takes one minute and few seconds. You take all the minutes you need. This is excellent. <laughs> so, yeah. so bare earth. The bare earth is built over, covered with farms and wilderness. A child crawls over the earth, even licks the bare earth, getting lifetime immunity against infections. A farm worker mends the rose while her baby lies between the rows on bare earth. Under the mother's watchful eye, the baby giggles and waves his arms and legs until falling asleep. She puts a black mark on his forehead, a black string with little bells on his waist to ward off evil spirits. On the beach, everyone likes to take off their shoes, letting the ocean run through their toes. Nice. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. Lovely. All right. <laughs> Lifting this group up. <laughs> 
Good luck, Mr. Ritter. You got to follow yeah, up on that one. All righty. So we've got to have an intergovernmental committee meeting proposed for um, Tuesday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. following our budget and finance committee meeting held that same day. We thought it would be good since everyone's already in the room and here. Why don't we just have Paul Schott give his stellar update about the budget and finance. And I invited some of the members of uh, Monroeville Council to sit on, in on that list of the details regarding the budget so that when we have the intergovernmental committee meeting, they have some of the numbers still swimming around in their minds. So they, they're tentatively agreeing to that and so look forward to that and it will be broadcast. The proposed agenda is security updates and initiatives intergovernmental inter inter operational communications and bridge and road updates uh, then we're going to have the advocacy day in Harrisburg so I'm going to hitchhike out to uh, Harrisburg knock on the legislature's doors uh, with a bunch of other folks from around Pennsylvania some school directors who were advocacy chairs and we're going to tackle a bunch of things with our mm, our representatives specifically uh, the leadership challenges, 24 General Assembly of seats will be vacated due to turnover like retirement, etc. 30 to 40 General Assembly seats will be in question due to challengers. Uh, the budget negotiation, this goes back to what Paul is going to say, budget negotiations are going to be a little sketchy because the district is supposed to put together a budget. These rascals in uh, uh, Harrisburg will be campaigning once the campaign is finished in uh, the, the primary on May 17th, they go on about a week or two vacation. Now we're still under pressure to get our budget done. They come back from vacation and then it's already June. And then they say, well, why don't we just take the summer off and, and try to do the budget? That puts the pressure on us again and again and again. So Paul's going to try to let them know that there's really, you know, just always puts us in a very difficult position when we're trying to arrange our budget just because of the way the primary and the, the elections are raised. The other thing we're going to try to talk about are vouchers and assessment appeals and online clearing houses of educational courses and the reduced milk fat to be served in school cafeterias and the designation for schools that have students in military programs and medical marijuana in the workplace. So I swam through a lot of these, but these are all really important topics. For example, medical marijuana, for a bus driver, if it impairs their activities, we need to, the, the schools need to be able to weigh in on the use of medical marijuana uh, for bus drivers. So we have to think through what we're going to say and then present it and then have the legislature take it up and then tweak the legislation so that it accommodates whatever our safety needs are here at the schools. So there are a lot of topics. I'm going to be going out there and I'll bring a, re a report back to the team here. And uh, charter schools is another big one. So we're going to talk about charter schools as well. And that's all I have. Any questions? What, what day is that, John? That's the uh, April 26th is a Monday, next Monday. Wake up early in the morning, go out, spend all day, and come back. Now, that's virtual as well, right? It is virtual as well. But however, you have more impact, we find, if you're there. face to face, either with the legislator or with sometimes even better with their staff members who are more up to speed on some of these narrow mm, questions that get tossed back to the legislature so for them to bring a vote on. So April 26th. April 26th. Tuesday. April 26th. I think it's a Monday. Fifth is a Monday, isn't it? Hanging and building and grounds. That's a Tuesday. So I have Monday the 26th. So I will I will double check. I think it's a Monday. So maybe I have my date. Monday's yeah. the twenty fifth. Yeah. Right. So it should be on twenty fifth. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't there an issue over milk? With uh, I, I just briefly read some of the things that were going on. Whether they were trying to introduce more reduced milk or to introduce more whole milk. They're trying to reintroduce whole milk. That's why I briefly read something. And All of us, we grew up on whole milk. And we right. thought milk's the perfect food, et cetera, et cetera. And then they changed it because obesity started to weigh in. Yeah. So the question is, which is better? You know, which, which should the schools offer? What's the price of milk, and et cetera, et cetera. I have yeah, to figure out what the date on the calendar is, but that's about it. 25th earlier. Yeah. Thank you, John. Well, um, 
this district has faced lots of challenges, this community, in the last, well, pick, pick it, a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years. And this, uh, this latest event, uh, you know, proximity is a strange thing. You know, we read about shootings here and shootings there, and they all hurt, but when the, the young person who died lives a couple blocks away, there's a certain intensity that didn't exist before. So, um, in the last couple of weeks, we've had two different mentoring groups come here to, to give us ideas for how to reach uh, young people. I, I would like to uh, suggest to the community that if anyone out there has any other ideas, any other programs, any other plans, you know, to help us reach these kids, all of whom seem to be at risk. You know, you don't really have to do anything wrong in America today to wind up dead. Yeah. All you have to do is be in the wrong place uh, at the wrong time. We can't fix the macro problem, so maybe, you know, one kid, if we can keep one kid out of the wrong place and then another kid, you know, maybe we can actually make a difference. So <laughs> anyone has any ideas, anything at all, you know, all of us can be reached by email or phone, however you need to do it. Get in touch with us. We're going to keep trying to cooperate with all the folks who show up with programs who've succeeded in helping kids. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to get past our differences to get to a place where we, uh, you know, we used to just think about educating them. Now we have to keep them safe and educate them. And uh, you can't do one without the other. So that's all I have. So I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Williams. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Delaney. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. Have a good, uh, good uh, month.